Hello and welcome back to our second community match in Blood Bowl 2. The first one was a lot of fun, so hopefully this one will be as good or better. <laughs> and today I am playing against David from Two Fools Network. It's um, a small YouTube channel as myself. and um, But I think he's not alone, there are two or more, as the name suggests. <laughs> Um, and yeah, they are doing Blood Bowl and Binding of Isaac and stuff like that, I think. So go check them out. And yeah, uh, today I most likely will play with the Skaven. And we'll be right back once we start up the game. See you in a moment. So I've unpaused now as well, so I'm recording again. Well, hello to your channel as well. Yeah, as I've mentioned in the beginning uh, I'm playing against Dave from Two Fools Network um, and we're playing with my Skaven against his humans so that should be fun I hope <laughs> well I hit next oh okay I see yeah, you I need to hit box. next as well and then you can uh, start the game or choose a um, a stadium and stuff like that well if we choose my stadium we'll get free magician I have to be honest, I don't like the upgrades too much, but I, I, for a game like this, uh, it's perfectly fine, I think, so do whatever you want, <laughs> basically. Well, How many stadiums are there? A lot. There are a lot of pre made ones. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think they give you that one is... for each of the stadium upgrades, plus uh, several blank ones that are just level four for the nice um, optic. Okay. So, we're using yours? Well, I, I had to run off real quick to get a D12. A 12-sided dice, <laughs> and I figured we'd do it a random... Yeah, the, the timer that, ran out. Yeah. Well, we could go back and start it over again if you'd like. Um, I, the free wizard is fine, I think, so uh, I don't okay. know if we need to do that. And, okay, I can get a little bit of one babe, and that's it. But I'm going to take a look at your team real quick here. Sure. I have oh. some... Should I have set it for three minutes or left it at two? Um, I don't know. Uh, yesterday, when we recorded, when I recorded the first one, we left it at two, and that worked out fine, I think. Uh, so, I don't know. Three minutes is a little bit easier for time management, but it should be okay with two, I, I think. I, uh, I recently suffered some losses. I was up near the 2K value, but I... Both my receivers died, uh, my kicker died, and I had a blitzer die. It's within like two to maybe three games. And that sounds like a rough patch. <laughs> well, luckily I had the 150k saved up, so I was able to replace most of them pretty quick. Yeah, uh, so do you usually field how many players or how many do you have in reserve? I normally keep 12 on the human team. Okay. Uh, I am nowhere near as analytical as you are. I am a very fly-by-the-seat-of-pants kind of player. Yeah, I... I it, whoop, yep. I, would, I should think about what I wanted to say first before I started talking. So, um... It's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's just sometimes I, I know what I want to say, but I don't know how to say it in English, and that trips me up a little bit. Um, I want... And now I've forgotten what point I wanted to make. Because About me <laughs> playing kind of loose and crazy? Uh, yeah, I, I started off like that as well, with elves mainly, and you can afford to do that there a lot more, with uh, the whole team having agility 4. But uh, once you... I played a lot of league uh, games um, in different leagues, and sometimes you just have... At some point you have to, to learn all these things if you want to... Um, get competitive with it and so that's where I uh, ended up getting 
um, more into the analytical part. I'm, I'm nowhere near where other people are with all the theory crafting you can do with the uh, probabilities of what choices would be best and when. But I think I've got a good grasp overall. Uh, I understand the beginning levels of statistics, but to me, I know this is, sounds kind of backwards, but I like the game for the game, not necessarily the war. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people love the bashing, especially when you consider the number of chaos players. Yeah. Well, I I think I've I've stated my opinion about chaos on numerous occasions in my videos and bash teams. I usually don't play bash teams because I like ball handling and I like the agility game a lot more than the bash game. And I, I agree. I, I'm I'm playing the orcs mainly because I it's it's nice variety now. And I don't mind them, actually, but it's the main reason I excluded Chaos completely from the choice uh, that was uh, in the poll that I created right. there. Just because I don't want to play them, because they are, at the moment, the strongest team in the game. That's just a fact. Once they get to high team value, uh, they're so hard to crack. I would say that they are an interesting option if you play them and choose not to go the bash route or the mutation route. When you consider that the Chaos Warriors are 4 Strength and 3 Agility, and then the Horned Goatmen can at any time during a Blitz be 4 Strength as well. Yep. So, I have a team currently where I'm playing them, and I haven't played them seriously, but I'm playing them more as a very bad elf team, or kind of like the humans. Mm -hmm. Because they have good stats, but no real starting skills. Yep. And that's how humans are. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, well, at least humans start with some block and stuff like that. They're blitzers, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. But aside from that, uh, yeah, so Chaos is really struggling in the, the early game. But the, the more experience they gain, the harder they get to beat. And I'm really amazed that I've managed to win as many games as I have by now, or draw it against Chaos with, with the Skaven and, and Lizardmen. Well, Lizardmen, I really enjoyed. I had done about a 13-game streak with a lizard team I called the Test Tube Terrors. Okay. The idea was that they were a science fair project gone wrong. <laughs> and uh, the, the only problem with them is the big guys are big guys and the fast guys are fast and neither can do the other job at all. Yep. But other than that, they come out the off the starting gate very strong it's just their strength uh, advantage they have so many players with strength four makes right. it really hard to deal with basically so, I, I think early uh, early uh, lizardman teams tend to beat themselves with because they have no block or ball handling skills so every reroll hurts a lot I, I agree with you. Okay, so you've got some skills I haven't seen used in Blood Bowl 2 yet. Not that they are a bad one. For example, Grab is a really nice skill. But I haven't seen that used yet. Okay, you know how Sidestep works? Yeah, I, uh, I, I know how Grab works. It's just oh. that I, I haven't seen it yet uh, in Blood Bowl 2. I think the one time I could have used it was with Sleebly, the Lizardman um, star player. And then it right. was a little bit bugged. The only problem I have with it is I bought it and put it on the Blitzer, thinking I could use it as part of a Blitz, and I was wrong. Yeah. Okay, that's a good start. I don't like that ogre. Piling on is a bit of a risky choice for big guys, I think, but if it works, it really hurts. Well, I got... I have to admit, uh, he's my second ogre. Okay. And the first one died from a piling one, I think. <laughs> so that one was a little bit of uh, ugly sportsmanship. I'd had enough and said, okay, let's play their game for a little bit. Yeah. And humans are an interesting team just because you can do stuff like that. They have a lot of variety. 
they have strength access and uh, agility access on other players, so that's a really interesting mix of possibilities you can go there. My first human team were called the Knights of Grendel, and one of my favorite things to do was to hand the ball to the big guy, or if during a <laughs> kickoff, give it to him. Because that one in six chance of him being stupid Ow. isn't really that big of a deal. Okay, so good thing this is a friendly game and there is no... Um, it, the injuries don't stay. Right. Otherwise, this would have been not so nice. <laughs> well, I, w I went ahead and used the Apothecary, even though it's not a permanent... Because I need to have as many people in the game as possible. Yeah, that that makes sense. And I think I mentioned it with uh, Srat yesterday that he could have used the Apothecary in the end to keep a KO player on the pitch. I remember you saying that. Um, that's something people tend to forget about. It's, it's risky to do that, of course, and usually a waste of the Apothecary. But in a setting like this, it would probably work out fine. Yeah, I think it's a good strategy if, like you said in this one, where there's no ramifications, long-term ramifications. Okay. okay. Let's see, so I should at least set up a one-turn touchdown opportunity here. But You're then I heard the timer in my ear. <laughs> yeah. Your very fast Skaven reminds me of when I first started playing. See, I started playing in October. Okay. When the, and it was the first time I've ever played Blood Bowl. Mm-hmm. And I started off with the High Elves. And was able to get a hold of a... I made a catcher who had... He got a movement bonus. And I went ahead and with the skills picked up the... The, the ability to let you go for it the, the third time. Yeah, Sprint. And then I had the short feet. Yep. And if I got the kickoff event where you got to move one space, mm -hmm. I could do the one turn touchdown. Okay, well. I mean, I won't use wrestle if I don't have to. Oh, I understand. <laughs> That's I, the, I, the well, problem when you, you use your big guy at, as a first action can go pretty wrong. Yeah, I don't normally re-roll them. Yeah, it's it's just the loner is just really a problem. So I know you're not a fan of big guys. Yeah, with most teams, uh, at least. I, I want to like them, but I mean, I, I you've seen on my Skaven team, I think, when I started using the Red Ogre in the beginning, it just did not work out. I could try what I wanted. Admittedly, the the Red Ogre is not the best uh, of the bunch, but he should have worked better, I feel. Well, I was going to ask you, which do you, which do you find more annoying, the wild animal or the really stupid? It depends, I think, because wild animal is, in theory, a lot better, because you don't lose your tackle zones if it fails. But you need to be blocking to use it reliably. Um, because otherwise you only have a 50% chance to, to actually get uh, the action. So I think it's it's not that easy to, for me at least to, to decide that. It depends on the team. For example, with the orcs, I won't use the big guy. You, I don't really feel the need to use him. The troll is interesting because the team comes with the goblins, which the troll can throw. Yep. And you can, in some limited circumstances, use the goblin as an offensive weapon. Yep. Have you ever seen a goblin that lands on a on a space where that is already occupied because he can? And doesn't it knock the opponent down? Yep. It might it can also KO and injure the opponent, I think. It's basically an, an armor break. It looks pretty funny on top of everything as well. I, I learned that when I was using a Chaos team and one of the star players is a kind of a big ogre looking thing and he comes with a goblin. Yep. 
And that's when I was like, oh, I've got to make an orc team and just start throwing goblins. <laughs> Now, I remember SRAB asking you if you play the game when you're not recording, and you responded that you didn't too often because of your time. Yep. Does that mean that do you record games just for the fun of it? Well, or do you try to approach Blood Bowl very competitively? I mean, I am playing in the Open League and not even in the ladder, so... I think I main more for the fun of it, and I because I I like oh he's stunned and I got sent off okay um I think I play more for the fun of it. Of course, I want to do well, but I've noticed real early that doing commentary and playing at the same time kind of um, makes me play a little bit worse than I probably would do if I wouldn't be talking all the time. Uh, just because I have more time to think about what I want to do. Um, but aside from that, I, I like it. And I actually, I I would like to play a little bit more competitively. I have been thinking about maybe starting a small league for a while now. Um, oh, well, that was one of the topics I was going to bring up with you. Yeah, because I, the problem is, for one, I don't know if I have the time necessarily. It depends on, on how many games. So one per week would probably be hard. One every two weeks would probably be manageable. Then I would have to find other guys that would be willing to, to play or interested in playing and that I know wouldn't just quit if things didn't go their way. Right. Which is have a pretty you, big problem, I think. I can believe that. Have you seen the Crendor Inventational videos? Uh, in part, because that's the main reason I started recording Blood Bowl, I think, in the first place. I looked up games, and aside from one specific guy that I know plays very well, I found a lot of other YouTubers that don't really can play Blood Bowl that well. And I, I like it for the the Crandorian, I like it for the for the entertainment value, but not necessarily for the um, for the skill in the game itself. See, I started watching Blood Bowl through a YouTuber named Northern Lion. Yep. And he doesn't seem to be very into the game. It just seemed to be something he found. Played a few and didn't seem to take to it. And then the Crandorian Invitational seems to have fallen apart with one person getting sick. And yeah, then after the yeah. holidays, they just never really picked it back up. It wasn't that um, Total Biscuit? I, I don't know. Uh, you're probably right. I know that one of them had to drop out because of uh, chemotherapy, I think. Yes, sir. Um, which is really not a nice thing, of course. <laughs> yeah, my mom went through it, so... Okay. It is, it is a mess. Yeah, but I, I, I... I would be interested, should you ever... Should you ever get to that point, I'd be interested in being a part of it, even if it's only four people. Yeah, I was thinking about maybe going four or six. Um, so, I don't know, maybe we can work some things out and uh, maybe see if we can find other people to, to get that started. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be YouTubers, so if Srab, for example, would be interested in it as well, um, that is perf would be perfectly fine with me, I don't think that would be something uh, would be a problem if someone is not recording for YouTube. Right. It's mainly about having competitive, nice competitive games without s uh, constant conceits and stuff like that. The, uh, the other aspect that I would be interested in is, you know how you can sell your players? Uh, yes, I have not really looked into that, but I know that there is a market now. Or a, a, a marketplace, basically. So I'm in the same boat as you. I know that it's there, I just don't know anything about it. I think what I would be interested in as well in that is maybe using the aging system, which could, if it's a really long-running league, would secure that Chaos teams don't get too bash-happy. Because once a player reaches a certain amount of games, he has a chance to just retire and be gone. Right, I do remember reading about that in the early days of when I started playing. Do do elves not age? Because 
or was it possible that when I first started playing, I entered a league that didn't have aging? Uh, that probably they didn't have aging, and it's a lot of games. I think before that, it's forty plus or fifty plus games before you even have to check if a player retires. I think. Yeah, I think they get something between eight and thirteen games equal a year, and they have like seven years before they. I don't. I remember looking at it once, so I'm recalling it poorly. Yeah, I, I looked at I looked at it a few days ago, but I can't remember at the moment as well what the actual amount is. Okay, so I need to finish my setup here at some point. Sure. So do you find uh, fouling to be a useful strategy? Uh, well, fouling, it, it, it once again depends a lot on the team, I think. I, I haven't fouled in the first few years in Blood Bowl, I think, maybe once I think I fouled maybe once every 10 or 20 games just because for one I didn't really like fouling for whatever reason and also I usually couldn't afford it where there are just teams where every player is too valuable to be wasted on a foul but now with the Skaven for example I foul a lot if I can afford to just because I kind of need to and if the Chaos team focuses on killing me, then he has to live if I kill one of his players while stepping on him. Right. I'm um, kind of a mixed bag with it. I, I know sometimes I let my emotions get to me. <laughs> and I have been known from time to time to take the last round to just go ahead and foul someone. Not very proud of it, but it happens. Yeah, I, I don't think... That, that's one of the reasons... The one thing I think I've never done is the turn 16 foul. But there is actually... Oh, that's yeah. unfortunate. The sure hands failed. Well, it is raining. Yep. But still, it's pretty unfortunate. The, the turn 16 foul is considered bad manners for a lot of people. Because it, it's basically just petty for a lot of... A lot of guys at least think that it's petty. But if you're in a league uh, setting, it's actually not, because it c could destroy a good player that would you help won't your have own standing. Again. Right. Yep. So, I do personally don't do the turn 16 foul, usually, but I can understand in the right setting when someone does it. Yeah, when I first started playing, the first thing I bought for my elf team was the dome to keep the weather nice. Okay. That way I wouldn't have to deal with raining days, snow days, because you need to be able to pick up the ball and pass. Yep, and I think that's actually one of the only stadium upgrades I could... I would choose myself because it's not that intrusive. You may also like the one for security where it protects you from riot and throwing stones. I actually like those events, though. They are really chaotic. Oh, but I, I I think it's nice. I don't um, know. I think after the the character died from a rock, that kind of made me a little upset. Yeah, I've seen that happen as well. That's not nice, but yeah, it's Blood Bowl. True, true. But that's basically the answer to everything bad bad that can happen. Oh man, I'm. It's basically similar to what I had with Srab yesterday. I am getting really good block rolls at the moment. But I don't know for how long that will stick because at some point you can start to hit me back. Well, it is part of the plan. So I try to secure the ball. I know a lot of people throw their blocks first. Yes, I think the you, um, picking up the ball first can work, but it's usually, if it happens what just happened now, you wasted all your opportunities to throw a block. And that's a bit of a problem. And the t at least two dice blocks are usually pretty safe. So that could have worked. So what what team do you like the best at the moment in Blood Bowl? 
truthfully, I don't think I have a favorite. Um, there now I don't have access to Wood Elves, so I've never got to play the Wood Elves. They're pretty and fun as well. I have looked at the Chaos Edition. I do have access to that due to the uh, the two fools, two of us, uh, Drew and myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got that guy. All. Oh, thank God, this is not permanent. That's he's just a line with it without any skills, so I wouldn't use the apothecary anyways. Ah, uh, that's true. So Drew's the one who has most of the equipment and the games, mm -hmm. and so he had Chaos Edition from his own personal library. I looked at it a little bit. I don't think I care for it, to be honest with you. And I think, to be fair, it's because I got spoiled on the graphics of this. Yeah. That's a big factor. Now, I am... Let's see. Let's look at this guy first. Nah. The, the blodge combo is one of my favorite. Yep, he's missing sidestep, but he's got other nice skills. So, to answer your question, I guess my favorite team is still probably High Elves. Even though there are other teams much more fun from the start. And I guess I'm not a big fan. I, I'm not a big fan of Chaos. Sorry, I was watching what I was doing. No for problem. Once. <laughs> That's what I meant, basically. Um, it's once you have to to do your stuff and talk while doing it, it it sometimes gets a bit distracting. Trying to get a better throw during the rain. I was thinking about it, but I now Drew likes to laugh when he sees me play because he says, "I do." We have a state called Texas. Yep. And Texas is famous for high school football. Mm hmm And they call it. He calls it Texas shotgun style playing, where you just throw the ball at every given opportunity. <laughs> I I love it. I know. I know m more games I have either tied or lost due to my own personal throwing than the other opponents playing. But I'm in it for fun. Well, and if you're playing with uh, High Elves a lot, it doesn't make sense because they are a passing team, so they specialize in throwing. Uh, so at least in, in considering that, it does make sense. The Skaven, I find, are fun. I just wish they could last a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah, they've got a lot of armor value 7, which is a bit of a problem sometimes. But I'm used to it. My, my favorite team, I've mentioned it with uh, uh, Srap yesterday as well, is Pro Elves, and aside from their two Blitzers, all they have is armor value 7. So I'm used to playing the squishy teams. I guess I should think this through before I do anything. Well, let's do this. I, while you're doing that, I think I approach Blood Bowl a little bit more from an R, a role player perspective because. I'm an old fan of role-playing games, mm -hmm. so the the characters, the the team members, are more important to me than the team or the victory, and I find that that gets me in trouble. Yeah, probably. If you're trying to maybe build a small narrative about, around something, uh, that might make it more complicated. So a lot of times, I find it more interesting to level my characters up and keep them alive than actually winning the game. On a long-term perspective, that's not wrong, necessarily. Um, does make a lot of sense, I think. Um, I just need to, just need to 
confirm my setup here real quick. And I, I used to play a lot of pen and paper role-playing games myself. I fell out of it a little bit uh, over the last few years. Mainly because groups, my, my group didn't come together as often as it used to. Well, that's always the that's always the rub with those kind of games is that you actually need the people and of yeah. course life life gets in the way from time to time. Yeah, our game master had a little bit of a, a time constraint and that made it hard to, to get everyone together. Is there any aspect of Blood Bowl you don't like? Uh, chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it's I I don't know there it does have its flaws of course but overall it's a pretty solid game and I like it a lot. Oh, so you're a guy in the I I was trying to find the player that got stunned and I didn't see him in the beginning. Did it and to your me ogre doesn't want to do anything today apparently. Did it to me again. <laughs> I went ahead and I figured I've got four rounds, I've got four re-rolls. I went ahead and spent it this time. Yep. And it worked out for me. Yep. And sometimes it's worth it to, to try to get the re-roll with the, with the big guy. Okay, go but ahead. I, I, I'm not sure with the, if, I, if I have any specific things that, that is a problem. I think the main problem right now in Blood Bowl 2 is that there are not enough teams. And it was the same with the Chaos Edition, at least similar. Oh man, your rolls are not holding up at the moment. Oh, I, I don't mind. Especially if we're both stunned. Yep, at least there's that, yep. It's just, even in the Chaos Edition, they left out a lot of the star players that would have helped against Chaos and uh, Nurgle and other of the really big bashy teams. Uh, because... There are, basically every team has access to a player with the skill Chainsaw, which is a really strong blitzing and fouling skill. I don't know if you have... It's not in the game at the moment, so I don't know if you no, know No, I'm it. not aware of it. Basically, you use a Chainsaw and um, get plus three or something like that. I, I, I haven't used it in a long time because I uh, don't play the Chaos Edition at the moment. Does it count as a secret weapon? Yep, that's the problem, but there are star players that are really cheap that ca can have it, and the Chaos player has... They will get scared if they see something like this, because if they can... Their Minotaur or whatever else could just get wrecked because of the chainsaw. Of course, your player is gone after that, maybe, uh, if he gets caught, but... It's well, he's pretty... a secret weapon. He's going off anyways. Yep, but then in, at least in Blackpool 2, you could have the uh, the stadium upgrade for the bribe or just buy one. If you're getting the star player as well, you might have enough to buy both. Yeah, I, uh, I'm playing a dwarf team. My daughter wanted me to make a dwarf team named after the uh, dwarves from The Hobbit. Okay. And uh, we put Bomber, the big dwarf, on the death roller and finally was able to get the stadium upgrade to keep the bribe in play from time to time. Ah, yes, I, I think I saw one or two of, of, of the, your matches with the with the dwarves. I remember now. With the names. <laughs> now right. that you, you mentioned uh, what they're named after. And I think that's actually one of the only possibilities to, to actually use the death roller because it's just bad. Well, well I played... Otherwise, I played a game the other day, and the guy was able to score on turn four. I had a bribe, and I didn't use it, and he, he said, why did you not use it to save your death roller? And I said, well, if I save the death roller, I have him for another four turns. But if I don't save the death roller, I have the bribe for another 12 turns. And yep. so a lot of times I find it just comes down to what do you need done. I have enough dwarves to fill the full team after the death roll is removed. Yeah, I think it's it's a it's not an easy decision. It really depends on what you're playing against and what you have available at that uh, point in time. It might have been good to save him, but you're you're right. It's just four turns instead of twelve, where you at the later point could just foul. Oh boy, hello. Well, I was going for the strip ball, but I will go for the broke leg. Even though it's not really a broke leg. <laughs> so I think I will not re-roll that. I'm, I, I'm, 
I try to play even though there's no consequences like they are and I usually wouldn't use the apothecary on an, on an, a badly hurt even if it's yeah, my, my one turn touchdown player unless unless you absolutely need the character I agree with you yep and at the moment I don't feel that need yet so the guy who has the ball now he he kind of cracks me up in this team. It's he is a bit weird. With the My, Yep. With the agility four and sure hands, it's really nice for ball handling, but it's basically a thrower at this point. Well, when he first leveled up and got the agility four, yep. I thought I have a fake elf. And so I used him as a receiver. Mm-hmm. Because I had I didn't I didn't start the game with catchers. Yep. In the beginning when I start playing, I keep uh, the blitzers as catchers. Okay. Uh, so I used him as uh, the receiver, and then you know eventually, Elder Flax in there would get injured and knocked out of the game. So I started using him as the backup quarterback. So he's become quite a versatile cog, not necessarily needed, but always fits. Yeah, makes sense, I think. I, I don't know if I personally would have given him sure hands in the long run, but it's not a bad choice, I think, and it makes sense to, to build him in that way. I'll tell you exactly why I picked that. When you have to run into the pile and pick the ball up. Yep. So you've got two or three tackle zones, and now his pickup is, what, 50%? Um, yeah, it's... 50% on two tackle zones, I think, if my math is not wrong. And so that's why I gave him short hands to, to double the chance that he can pick it up. I know that's not really how the statistics work, but it's good enough for me. Yeah, and it's the what is a bit of a problem in Blood Bowl, I think, is the mutation category. Just because the mutation skills are really strong and, and there is for example stuff like big hand which just negates right. any sort of um, any sort of um, tackle zones when you try to pick up the ball okay so can I leap and I probably have to activate the blitz first and then say I want to leap or not I believe you do I believe you have to activate the blitz first if you're going to use it but I it doesn't look like it's working at the moment that's because I, I want to blitz. Can you not click him like you would for picking leap and pick blitz? Yeah, but then I'll start to blitz. The icon shows up. And then right. I click on him again to leap. And I think that negates it. I don't know. We'll find out. If he's still blitzing. He's still blitzing. Okay, so yep. that worked. I wasn't I, sure about that. I remember you saying to Esrab that you had just got it. Yeah, it's the first time I tried it out right now. <laughs> so I'm happy that worked out even though it didn't actually get me the ball uh, but at least I got your players all nice and bunched up there now I started watching your series as it were uh, a little later in and I'll admit I've kind of stuck with just watching the, the gutter runners because I find them entertaining. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what kind of problems did you have with your rat ogre? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I think I, for one, we I rolled a lot of wild animals and I tried to serve a lot of guys with him and it usually ended up with not so favorable block rolls. So both downs and attacker downs. So I, I think there was one infamous match against the Lizardman team where I spent three or four turns trying to serve uh, Saurus and always failed. At uh, Because I rode one wild animal and then I failed a block and stuff like that. And then I think it was the second or third Red Ogre in total because he kept getting injured on top of everything. So I just had no luck with the with the rat ogre. And at some point I just 
uh, said to myself, let's let's not do that again. And I, I, at one point, I didn't have the money to replace him right away, so I played a few matches without him, and that worked pretty well. So I just stuck with it. I have run into some situations with the Rat Ogre or the Minotaur. I don't remember which. Could have been one time with each one of them. You should maybe where... stand up your thrower. Oh, I forgot all about him. <laughs> I forgot he was even there. I was able to use Frenzy and the way that the opponent had left his players to double surf people. Yep. It's hard to pull off, but when you do, it's a lot of fun. That's really hard to set up. But it, with Frenzy, is basically the only skill you can do that with. It takes a lot of the guys, too, because I had to put several of my own players in the front and the back of the enemies. Yep. So that they wouldn't go to the sides. And ideally, you have to make sure that you don't leave yourself exposed to being surfed in the next turn yourself. Well, if they can surf the big guy, more power to them. Yep. But... Uh, it might just be worth it to go for a two dice against block, if you can, uh, just to get the chance of surfing the big guy. All right, well, with that guy being the only possible receiver... Yeah, things are not looking good at the moment for you. Let's see, maybe I can get the ball free again. But there is still the second half, and we both still have our wizard. Well, I'm hoping that the rain stops. Okay, so I probably didn't really... I should probably should have used Wrestle. Yeah. But I don't know. Were you not... Okay. Is there a reason why you didn't? I just didn't really think about it, and I thought it was a good idea and just realized what I did after the fact. Just to knock him down? Yep. And that I didn't really need that to do that, to get the ball free. See, like, when I first started playing, I didn't quite understand all the, the tricks. So, like, the first time I had a human level up, I gave the Blitzer wrestling. Yeah, that's just... Uh, block and wrestle is not a good choice. <laughs> Yeah, I. It was definitely foolish. Yeah, but it looks like you've you've come a long way since then. I have played a lot of games. It's a fun game. It it kind of frightened me how many games I had played in such a short time. How many uh, did you take a look at the statistic and how many games you are at the moment? Well, the funny thing is, is that all the teams before Christmas on my YouTube channel. I no longer have access to. The computer that they were on died. Is there no cloud save for Blood Bowl? I, I didn't save them because I didn't want to interfere with Drew's games. So I was afraid that if I overwrote the cloud, it would mess up his game. Okay. And so I never saved it to the cloud. That's a bit unfortunate. <laughs> So I have 60-something games on YouTube and probably an equal amount of games that I did not record. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done about the same since Christmas. Uh, well, it's the last round. I'm not worried about it. I can't sc score it. You know what? Just for the giggles. <laughs> it could at least prevent me from scoring. Oh, I didn't know you had another turn. Yep. Ah. Oh, I didn't. No, you don't. Ah. I... No, that gets me every time to... 8th turn or 16th turn, sometimes I get lost in it and forget I have another action. Yeah, I, I, I think I made the same mistake yesterday. I set up for defense when I had to set up for offense at some point. <laughs> it just happens sometimes. I used to do that a lot, but now that they actually say, you know, a defying all odds has chosen to receive, that helps me, but like right now, your opponent's placing in defense, so that means you're going to kick the ball, right? Yep. Sometimes I'm not paying attention or other things are going on in the house, because I record in the living room. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I forget where I am, and I'll set up for defense and end up having to kick, uh, receive the ball. 
Yeah, what what problem is for me? I just I I played I think eight hundred plus hours of the Chaos Edition, and the problem there is that some of the the terms are a little bit different. So it's not in attack or in defense, but it's uh, kicking team and receiving team. Right, which makes sense. And so I sometimes get used. I'm still used to that and just make the mistake of of um, setting up wrong or that Blood Bowl 2 uses icons instead of text and I can't get used to all the icons. I remember you telling us, Rab, about that. Yep, I, I complain about that on a regular basis. It's not pro probably not going to change, but at some point I will have to learn all the icons and I just... Can, uh, I sometimes mix up stuff like guard and block because uh, and mighty blow because they're mainly red both. And that, I have a hard time with dodge and catch. Yep, they are also really similar. It's just I I can understand why they do that and it's a good idea in in theory and for I think for a new player, it's not as big of a deal. But I for some reason can't really get used to it. Have you ever tried, uh, for the lack of a better term, a silly concept for your team? In what like, way? For example, like, for example, I started a team of Bret of Bretonians or Bretons, whatever they're called. Bretonians, with, I think. With nothing but peasants. <laughs> uh, no, I haven't done something like this yet. The um, silly part about it is, while I'm not winning... I'm very annoying. Yeah, with the amount of fend you have, so every player. That's that's definitely sounds annoying. Ball handling must be really annoying, though. The very first game, me and a another early orc team, neither one of us scored because none of us could pick up the ball. <laughs> um, I have rec I've been playing them for a while. So I have picked up two Blitzers since. Okay. But the part of the theme was that I would have enough money because my team was so low that I could get star players. Yeah. So the Mighty Zug makes a lot of appearances on that team. Uh, which star player is Mighty Zug? I don't think I've seen him yet. He's a, he looks like a, a human ogre half-breed. Okay. He has a four strength, maybe a five. He has a four movement and a pretty high um, armor, so, and he comes with block. So if you do the the story of this game, he'll show up there. Okay. So that'd be easy to find. I, I know he's a human star player, and I don't know if he shows up on any other uh, teams. I guess he shows up on the Bretonians, because I have him there. Yes, might be that he shows up in some of the other ones. I started the campaign, but then got annoyed about how slowly they introduce new mechanics because it's basically one really long tutorial. At I least, understand. At least for, for, for the first few matches. I understand. And it just took, I think, three or four matches for them to introduce turnovers, and that just got a bit annoying. Right, because in the beginning, it's not even really a game. Because the yep. moment you score, the team quits. And you, you don't even roll anything in the beginning. You you everything's every action you take succeeds. Yeah, the first I mean, having never played Blood Bowl, I appreciated it. Yeah. But it was also a bit of a detriment when I started playing online because I had gotten into the habit of doing certain actions and not realizing that not realizing there were ramifications. Yeah, that's something I I haven't been on Reddit very long, but uh, a post showed up there f a few days ago, or a week maybe, that just said, don't play against the AI because you learn bad, you get bad habits out of it. It's just the AI is really stupid and makes stupid decisions, and, and you don't want to learn that for yourself. And they almost never pass. Yep, and they don't set up for defense really, or, and stuff like that, they make just weird choices and the automatic pathing is a problem you really need to to see where you can dodge the best instead of where the game chooses to go for you because have sometimes you, it's worse have you thought about going your mutation route with your rat skavens 
or does it require doubles? Uh, for Skaven, it's doubles, unfortunately. And I do, at least on the gutter runners, have a few two hats. I think I remember the two heads for extra dodge. And I used to have a red with horns, actually. That's funny. Who I, it's actually, you get a, um, an achievement for that, the horned rat, because you've got a player with uh, horns mutation. But it actually can work, because with wrestle and strip ball, you can build him into a blitzing uh, ball hunter. And at, with horns, he gen blitz in with, uh, he blitzes with strength three. Dauntless is usually better, I think, but horns could make sense in that way. But I would like to get doubles on the Storm Vermin in the long run, so that I can get them both claw. I thought that. I thought that might be something. You may want to look into long legs, should you get it for the guy with Leap. I don't really need it on him anymore, because he already has Agility 6. Fair enough. And it would make sense if he was still at Agility 4. But it doesn't get better than a 2 plus roll. And I'm already that, there. I think that's the one thing about the game that annoyed me. Because I got to the point where I was thinking, what's the point of all this? Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. I just realized I made fireball bait. Yep. And I still have to go for it. I mean... Now I probably wouldn't need to because I have direct access in theory, but it's probably still a good choice here. Hey, I, at least I only hit one. Well, I mean, you dislodged the ball, which in the rain is a, always a wonderful chance of annoyance. Well, if everything goes according to what I have planned, the ball will be a little bit further away at the end of the turn. That's always the plan, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> but I'm actually hoping that they implement a specific team, which it's once again not an official team, I think, but it's officially a tabletop team. Also, it's allowed to be used in the actual tabletop, even though it's not made by a Games Workshop, and that's the Slam team. I don't know if you have read no. or heard about them. I don't know anything about it. They're basically frogmen, so um, a little bit like lizardmen. Sure. Uh, but a little bit silly, and every player has leap and very long legs, so they can just jump all over the place. That's funny. And they, it's really unpredictable. They have agility four players with, um, with very long legs, so they leap on a two plus, but everyone else has only agility three. So you tend to need a lot of rerolls with that team. But it's just really fun because you can, you have to really think about your defense against them just because they can leap over everything. Do you find any skill to be next to useless? Oh, I'm sure there are a lot I have never taken, but I don't know if there, if one is completely useless. I don't so know. Trying to think about it. When I ask a question, I like to try to think my own answer, too. So I was... I don't know, some of the ones in the passing seem like they'd be very difficult to use, or by the time you would want to use them, your your character should be pretty high level anyways. Mm -hmm. I find some of them to be redundant or useless. I don't know. Yeah, so there are definitely ones that you take very very rarely for example thick skull is not it's not a bad skill but you usually just don't need it or that's funny. they're just better skills i know you you have thick skull on some on some players here i think on a catcher yep the the new catcher leveled up and he rolled doubles so i thought this is the only chance i'm going to be able to get something in the passing or strength but the part was, was i didn't really find anything i wanted so I went with the thick skull because he's he's going to get hit. I know he's going to get hit over and over. Yep. And he's technically my third receiver. <laughs> I don't know if what what double you would usually get in that regard. I I got like a, a double twos. Yeah, it's just the 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 access to the oh. to the other categories in general. I understand for, for human catchers or receivers. If I had the categories right now in front of me, I probably wouldn't know what, what could be good, but at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank there. <laughs> well, 
Uh, the catcher gets access to general and agility. Yep, so he's got strength and passing on a double. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Guard is always a good choice, but not on that guy, because you don't want him to, to be a guard guy, player. Exactly. So and he already has dodge. Question. Yep. Mm. Nerves of Steel would probably have been the best if you play on passing. That's a passing skill, and you ignore every tackle zone when trying to catch, pass, and intercept the ball. I understand what you're saying, and now that you say it like that, that's probably a much better idea, and I wasn't thinking about it, because I think of Nerves of Steel as just a passing skill. Because yeah, one of my favorite... For receiving, it's just awesome. I realize that now that you said it out loud. I just didn't think about it when it came up. Because I have Nerves of Steel, I think, on my passer. I do. Because yep. one of my favorite things to do is just to run up beside your character and then throw the ball. Yep. And it frustrates people. And that's one of the reasons why my favorite team, the, the Elves, or Pro-Elves, I think they're called still, uh, which are not in the game yet, the only Elf team that's not in Blood Bowl 2 yet, are so strong. I mentioned it with Srap yesterday as well. Their catchers start with Nerves of Steel, even though it's a double. So you just put two or three of them into the enemy's backfield, and even if he puts players next to them, you catch the ball on a 2+. plus. And that is really strong. One of the things that confuses me a little bit, uh, again, my partner in the channel, Drew, mm -hmm. he played the tabletop version. Yep. So he was telling me about Chaos All-Stars. Where it's a mixture of Skaven and Chaos and Dark Elves. Uh, Chaos Pact, I think. Okay. You're talking about. Yep, they act, that's one of the other team. I, I don't think it's an, an official Games Workshop team as well, but you are allowed to use it in the NAF, I think it's the organization it's called still, uh, that organizes a lot of tournaments for Blood Bowl. That's a really weird team, but fun, I think. I've never played them myself. I think it would be neat in this game if you could mix and match the races and the teams. And there actually is a drawback in that team. And what's that? Um, every player, so the I think you can have one Dark Elf lineman, I think it's just. I don't know if it's a runner. Then a Skaven, and I think, I think there was a third one in there somewhere. They all have the skill Animosity, which makes it if you want to hand off the ball to a player that is not of your race, you have to roll. And if you roll a one, the player refuses to hand off the ball. That's funny. You just won't do it. There's one other team, Underworld, that works with that mechanic. You've got a mix of goblins and uh, Skaven. With Mutation Axis, this really fun team. Um... I think at least that, that makes it a little bit more manageable because otherwise the team might be too strong because you get a good mix of very nice players. And Chaos Pack can take three big guys, I think, on top of everything. I would think that the disadvantage would be the, the prices. Yeah, that I don't I'm not sure. I think they are of course, the price is always a factor, but at some point you will have the money to get everything. So I don't know if that's too big of a concern. In the beginning, of course, definitely. But I don't know if it's once the team gets a few, uh, few matches in, I don't know how much of a concern it's at that point. But the rain does not want to go away, apparently. No, it's going to stick it's, around. It's worse for you than for me. Yep. Your agility definitely gives you the edge in the, in this weather. Yep, and with my agility 5 and 6, I can still pick up the ball on 2+. plus. So how do you use piling on? Of course you can in this case with a fan. But well, are you, are you greedy or are you... Uh, are you using it only when it's really useful? That's the answer. Um, just the <laughs> other day, I played a Chaos guy. He KO'd my character, piled on... And stunned and him? Stunned. Yep. yep. 
I had that happen t uh, to me as well, I think, with the Skaven once. It's just stupid to use it in, in that way. Because what's the point? Do you, well, I guess you get SPP if you injure the player during a pylon. So yep. it's, it's different from the, uh, the fouling where you don't. I don't know. I just don't just, see the point. It's... It's basically it comes down to how greedy is, is is the player because if you do it you have the chance to stun and otherwise the player is just off the pitch you don't get any SPP but you still get the advantage and that should be good enough. That's what I thought. It's like you KO'd the player. He was going to leave. You got you know, one step. I was already one person down, and you know how when you have an eleven to nine, eleven to eight, you can pretty much run the field. Yep. I didn't understand why you wanted to do it, other than some people just want to play to beat up players. Yeah, that's the the problem with with chaos at the moment. There are a lot of players apparently that just go for killer teams. They really don't care if they win or lose. They just want to destroy other teams. So, I I would say it's pretty safe that I've played over two hundred games. Of Blood Bowl since October. Mm -hmm. I can, with a lot of sincerity, say I've probably only quit six to eight times. Okay. And usually, it comes down to the point. Like, I remember one time I was playing a guy, he killed a character, but I was able to save it with the Apothecary, and my team value was 900 points less than his. Ouch. So I, I told him, I said, listen. I saved my guy. That's a warning. I'm going to step out of this. And he's like, I understand. I've never rage quit, and I've never done the thing where people just disconnect and let you sit there and wait for the what used to be a three-minute timer, now a six-minute timer. Mm -hmm. So I think, that's, I think that's the only aspect of Blood Bowl that, that I don't like, is the ability for people to just quit, and then you have to sit there for six minutes to get your reward. Yeah, and I... I think I've played one or two matches so far where my opponent disconnected. And I I usually don't want to think about the possibility that they rage quit or just quit to be spiteful maybe and make me wait or something like that. It's probably it probably is what happened, but I I I still want to hope that people are a little bit nicer. I don't know. It's Weird. <laughs> I understand. I try to think the best of people. I understand. But I, I know what you're getting from. I think that's one of the... I, I usually don't concede. I, I play it out till the better end, usually. I think in Blood Bowl 2 I haven't conceded a single game yet. And... The only reason I would concede is to, to, to save my team, basically. If you just... Uh, are losing players left and right or stuff like that to you and you don't want to risk it that would be a valid reason I think and that's basically what you did in that game so what are your thoughts on this team so far your uh, your team what did what is a uh, what do you think your weaknesses are other than the armor oh I don't know I'm I'm. St I still think that I'm. By now, I've overcome a, a pretty big weakness, and that is that, at we as weird as it sounds, my really good level ups on the gutter runners have given me some de really big problems, because usually you go block sidestep first, and that makes using the gutter runners a lot safer, because as long as your opponent doesn't have tackle, you can basically go anywhere, and be reasonably safe. But with all the agility and doubles and stuff like that, I, I sometimes struggle to use them. Um, by now it works because I the other players get caught up, but that has given me a hard time in the beginning. It's it's not only with Skaven, it's with other teams as well. When you get irregular rank uh, level ups when you don't need them yet or want them yet, but you still have to take them. Because you'd be foolish not to? Yep, but it, it screws up your development plan, basically. 
Uh, it's the same with um, with a double on a Saurus, for example. You usually want to take block as a first skill to make blocking with him easier, but you can't ignore a double or a, a strength up or something like that. I ran into a player with a Saurus who had strength six. Hey, so he got two. Yep. Bad. And he had no skills, just like you're saying, so... Yeah, but you can't not take that. Sir? You can't not Say take that at the moment. Right. <laughs> I couldn't knock him down, but he knocked himself down a few times. Yep. Because, you know, you roll into double both downs. Yeah, basically. And I, I don't know. The the main, the biggest problem is, is still the the armor, I think, with the Skaven. I don't know. Otherwise, I, I've... I think I've come into the team by now. I, I really like how they handle. And I think I'm, I'm doing a decent job with the team. I, I don't know. The, the armor is still the biggest problem, but aside from that, I I think it's it's going well by now. I find I can't seem to keep enough people. Yeah, I'm, I... The, what's been... It's... Yep. Yeah. Thinking first, then talking again. <laughs> <laughs> um, the with the Skaven or with every team, basically that's a bit squishier. If you lose a lot of players, it can really hurt you, and it's hard to to replace that. And you you said you played a lot of uh, high elves, and they're pretty pricey. Uh, the even the linemen I think are at seventy k or something like that. Right, but those linemen. I mean, you can make a team with nothing but the linemen there and be effective. Yep. So you have 12 players on your team? Uh, 13 usually with a Skaven. No, I mean on yours alone. Like right now, this team, defying all odds. How many players do you have total? Uh, 13. Okay, and so you've got four out. Some so you have nine on the field. Yep. Should be correct. Yep. But yours are kind of strong, so it's almost like it doesn't matter. Well, I think what is a big factor here is that I'm better at the agility game because of my gutter runners, but um, we're pretty equal in bashing at the moment because you don't have a lot of guard, and that's a big factor. If you had one or two players with guard or something like that, and I'm trying to stay away from you on top of everything, so you don't <laughs> get to bash me as much. Well, I had, at the time, all my linemen had guard. But with the loss of a few of them. Now, I don't worry about... Well, of course, the blitzers come with it, so, I mean, realistically, who's that leave? The thrower and the catcher. and I don't normally use them for... For fighting. Yeah. And this would have been a good instance to use piling on, in theory. At least if you can afford to have the ogre on the ground. See, he's stunned. Yeah, but you... It's basically the, the, the best situation to use it, because you are already through my armor, so you can only go up. It could be a stun again, but it could also be a KO or an injury. But I have to do another armor check. Nope, so it you be roll not... directly for the injury. If you are through the armor, before piling on, you don't have to roll again. Okay, I did not know that. And I that's thought... basically the, the only uh, situation where, I, where you should use piling on every time if you can afford to do so. Because from a stun, it can only get better. It can't get worse. So you only have to decide if you can afford to have your own player on the ground. Well, I think I like him better as tackle zones at the moment. Yep, makes sense as well. And that's why I said it's it's a bit risky on the ogre. Of course, he he has mighty blow already and can make really good use of the skill, but you you lose you lose his tackle zones and his strength five advantage. And this one technically has guard, though the guard probably won't come into play. It yeah, at least from the way he's positioned right now. 
Uh, but what I wanted to say with the players and the 13, I think the only reason I can keep 13 players at almost all the times at the moment is that I get conceded against regularly and that just gives you double winnings. So I usually don't have money problems to replace players. I lost two or three players in the last match, I think. So now I'm at exactly zero gold. So gotcha. if I lose any more, it could become a problem. But with the conceding mentality a lot of people have on, on online here, unfortunately, it usually is not. That's interesting to me. I don't understand the point. Because how is your team going to get any better if you never get any money? Yep. And most of the time, I think it's just rage quitting. Because I think a perfect example was a game I played a few weeks ago against the Wood Elf team. His attack failed and I scored on him, I think. And he just gave up at the end of the first half. Not, I, I think I injured one player and nothing too serious. Or maybe even maybe one permanent injury. I'm not entirely sure. But even that shouldn't be enough to, to force someone to concede. Okay, so let's talk about some of the extra aspects of the game. Now, I know you... I, let me rephrase that. I think you don't use the cheerleaders or the extra coach, do you? I use exactly one of both. Because I normally, if I have the money and I don't need new players, I'll normally go ahead and just up them for the chance of winning the kickoff events. But I don't find that it helps me very much. Yeah, but it's just you basically give yourself a bigger chance of... There are several factors, I think, that decide whether or not you can win that event. For one, there is the cheerleaders or the assistant coach. And then there's also something called fame, I think that's in here, and that is decided at random who, which team gets fame, and if it's one or two, or at all, I think. And that's well, I another we have factor the fan in factor. there. And the fan factor, that's on top of it, I think. Um, but aside from that, the, the problem with those is... I, if you don't use it at all, so the, the cheerleaders or um, the assistant coach, it's still it's one, two kickoff event out of events out of twelve or eleven. I think it's I think it's two d six that are rolled there, so it should be eleven because you can't roll a one. Right. I don't know if it's if it's a d twelve or two d six, so it's eleven it's, or twelve kickoff events. From the literature I've read online, it's d sixes. Okay, so that would make it 11. And so you've got, you're spending, you're increasing your team value to have a chance of getting one extra reroll uh, if you get the right kickoff event. And I usually just think that it's not worth it. Because that's the, I, the reason I go 1-1 one, one is that I have, so that I have a better chance of winning if my opponent doesn't have any points in there at all. I would go 2-2 two and two if I'm in a league environment where I know that everyone else is going 1-1 one, one, so that I still have the upper hand. But that's basically it. You just increase your team value to have the minimal chance of winning a kickoff event that gives you a reroll, and you should have enough rerolls to begin with. So that's why I don't go very heavily on that, usually. Because you could spend your money on inducements that are better or just get a reroll there if if it comes down to that because getting get yeah, 10 oh ouch oh we got them both i figured it was worth a shot yeah <laughs> and it does give you the touchdown so that's nice i still think the the touchdown animation of the humans is a little bit silly <laughs> Especially when they sometimes will move one step. Oh yeah, so they basically fly into the touchdown zone. It, it looks like he steps forward and then jumps. It's so silly. <laughs> I think that's... A, I don't know. I, I like the Wood Elf animations, but they look even more ridiculous because they do drop kicks and backflips and stuff like that, I think. Uh, depending on what they do. It's, a, it's fitting for elves, but it still looks a bit weird. Yeah, so I think I like the peasants. They do this little dance jig. 
And it's so silly. It makes me laugh every time. I don't think I've seen that yet. My favorite one is probably Halflings in the Chaos Edition because they just sit down and start eating a sandwich. I've not seen Halflings yet. They're a pretty fun team, and I, I really hope that after they implement the uh, three or four teams they have announced, they will go for um, the fun teams next, or at least one or two, so something like Goblins or uh, Halflings. So that's, that's, a, that's a nice point. I think that, well, let me rephrase that. You've made me think of something we talked about earlier. Talk about some of the skills and whatnot. My ogre has throw teammate. Yep. How useless is that? It's not if you're playing the ogre team, which is a team consisting of six ogres and the rest are snotlings, which can be thrown. Okay. So like on the human <laughs> team, I have no access to anyone with the right stuff. Not yep. even star player. Yep. I, I assume that there should be a star player for humans that has that. But they most likely haven't implemented that. I'm I'm not sure because I don't know all the the um, I don't know all the star players. Um, but I think I, I assume there should be ones so that the skill is not completely wasted on a human team. It would be nice to be able to buy off some of the detriments. For example, you roll doubles instead of, you know, getting a stat upgrade, we get rid of stupid. Yeah, that would be nice, but I think that would kill the balance a little bit at some point. You think so? The, the, the big guys are supposed to be a problem at points. Uh, it's just always the... it's part of the decision-making, I think. If Do you want to risk losing your tackle zones? for that chance at a, at a block, or do you just do nothing with your big guy and keep him there? It would be nice, of course, I, I agree on that, but I, I don't know if it, would be, if it would be a problem for the balance. Well, do you have any input now that we're getting near to the end of the game? Uh, on your... Playstyle, or what exactly do you mean? Sure, yeah, my playstyle. Um, I don't know. I, the problems with with our ongoing conversation, I I didn't pay too much attention to to some of the aspects of the game. Um, but I think overall, um, you're doing fine. I think there, the, you, we did talk about stuff like the your double choice or when to use piling on and stuff like that. So that can is probably something you could improve upon. But aside from that, I think it's fine. It's just that my, my, my Skaven are... I can do ridiculous stuff with them. And that makes it hard to, to get a regular match going. I was sitting here thinking it's very hard to play against this team because they're, things happen so fast. Yeah. When you get the ball, you score. <laughs> That's how you... And it takes like a turn or two. Right. Whereas most of the time, most of the things I'm playing against, the stall, stall ball factor, yeah, I have to play against people who cage and things like that. Yeah, I usually don't do that. Well, I've had a lot of fun with this. Yeah, I think it was a really fun game as well. I mean, we're not done yet, but we're close. <laughs> And I think we definitely should uh, talk further, maybe with the uh, if we can get a league or something like that going. That could be fun. Well, I am on board. So everyone I... that's watching on either channels, if you're interested, let us know. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Do you get a lot of feedback? Uh, sometimes. It's it's a weird mix. It I think it depends highly on the game. On more time, I get a lot of feedback. On Blood Bowl, it depends on what I'm playing against and what I'm playing with. And I usually don't get feedback, much rather it's just comments on, on stuff. Because in, in Blood Bowl, I try to, to go for educational and uh, tell people interesting and useful stuff. Um, I you still get sometimes, uh, still get comments sometimes that are really helpful, but usually it's just uh, overall. Um, general comments. I, I don't know how to, to say it exactly. No, I just converse, they, you get conversation topics. 
Or basically. not topics, but comments. Basically, yeah. See, I don't really have... I, well, that was my next question. Do you think you have a community forming? I think so. I, I really hope so, I should say. Um, I, I know that I have several regular viewers, and I'm really happy about that. So I'm hoping that something more develops out of that, because... I, I've, I have people that comment on basically every video they watch, so which is really nice. And I just hope that it it keeps going like that. And uh, I, I, I know that you, you guys usually don't do commentary on your videos. Well, since, I, since December, I've been mostly the only one playing, and I don't do commentary. Okay. Because for me... I, I watch these to watch the game. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your commentary is fine, but I don't I don't tune in to hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I tune in to hear to watch the game because sometimes I'll put a Blood Bowl game on by CK Nor and mute it and listen to the mute and listen to music at the same time because I enjoy his games, but I don't always I some sometimes him and his friends. The other people talking just aggravate me. Yeah, I Knorr himself is fine usually, but uh, right. the guys he has with him can get a bit uh, weird at sometimes. And or he's actually he's actually one of the few guys I watch Blood Bowl games of because he can he's playing really well and he knows well, he what he's doing. Of, I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off. I apologize. No, no problem. Okay, that scatter was not where I wanted it to go. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much ends that, doesn't it? Yep. Well, yeah, at least so. I saved a little bit of my pride by making one score. Yep. But it was fine overall. You you had to deal with that failed pickup in the beginning. So that's one of the other things you might want to uh, think about. So either secure the ball first a little bit further before you try to get the pickup, or just not pick up the ball as a first action because if it fails it's a big deal well it's like uh, you and srab were talking about sometimes you face this problem do you do the safe maneuvers or do you do what you want to do yeah but sometimes i have a plan in my head and i have to do it in certain steps that aren't necessarily good ideas yeah i i know what you mean it's it's always easy to to see these things and criticize them but if you're thinking about your own plan it's sometimes you just don't see the the potential problems or you think i still have to risk it right you end up getting in your own way yeah well that, that's just it's it's really not easy to to get out of these habits or just maybe find other options that you could do any final ideas or topics you'd like to bring up I think I'm good. All right. Well, I think I am as well. I've had a lot of fun, and I really appreciate it. You're the first person I've got to play Blood Bowl against that I was able to set the game up for. Okay. And I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, I had a lot of fun as well. So thanks for the match. And I, I, I hope uh, that we can do that again, maybe with a friendly match or a league. We'll, we'll see. I really like the league idea, but I'm always open for a friendly match. Okay, so, yeah. Take care, Felix. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was our second community match. It was a lot of fun as well, and I hope something comes out of that league idea. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to see me play more Blood Bowl, just subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to play against me, just contact me and I hope we can work something out. So, as always, thanks for watching. I hope that you tune in next time and have a nice day. Bye.